picture of, of what's happening today. And I'm very curious at what those posters and these brochures must have cost you and I. I gotta be honest, I mean, look at these things. These, I, I priced these a while ago, and these are full color. One, two, three, four, five, six, at least seven colors. These are expensive. So, as I'm sure, uh, as I'm sure you guys were disappointed that you could not get up and speak, um, that's kind of why I rented this room so that we could all have our say. Um, this was just a prepared statement. I'm just going to read the first three pages, and the, the other four pages are actually printed on those documents. You can spread those around. Um, Basically, we're here tonight to inform the citizenry of what's really behind these special service areas and districts. And we're talking about your sewer district, your water district, your power district, your lighting district, your special financing district, your unified police district, they call it a department, and the Salt Lake Valley Law Enforcement Service Area, which is also a special financing district. Uh, a special tax financing district is really like a third layer of government, bypassing the lawful structure and the legal system to create a new form of taxation. These districts are allowed to charge you, the home and business owners, who are forced to be a part of these districts, what is called a fee. Uh, but any government charge is indeed a tax, no matter what they call it. Uh, in this case, under the Salt Lake Valley Law Enforcement Service area, you are charged and forced to pay, I believe it's a $174 fee for what they call a police protection fee, which is unbelievable to me. If you do not pay this fee, your fee will be sent into collections by a private non-governmental corporation in California named NBS. And this company, this, this private corporation, who specializes in these types of districts, uh, does all the billing and collections for the service area. Um, much of this police protection fee is going to fund this private out-of-state corporation for things like this, and all those letters that you received that you thought you were receiving from the mayor, which actually became came from this private corporation in California. Um, <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Much of this, uh, I read that actually, uh, this out-of-state corporation was hired to come into your newly formed district formed by the county council without your vote or approval, as you well know, uh, and decide how much money you'd be willing to pay without protesting or putting up a fight. This is what these special tax district districting corporations do, and they are located hundreds and hundreds of them throughout the country. They canvass the district. They look at people like you and you and you, they take into consideration your medium income, and they say, we think that we can charge these people, all 250,000 of them, about $174, and they won't put up a fight, and they'll, eventually they'll pay it. That's basically what these corporations do. Uh, if you, the home or business owner, do protest this fee and, and find it assaulting to your constitutional senses, it is in place as a levy onto your property tax. In the first lien position, above all mortgages and even yourself, if your house is free and clear, you automatically get a lien. Likewise, when the county, the state, or the municipality that you live in, and you live in a municipal corporation, for instance, the Salt Lake uh, city Corporation offices are on the street. I live in the Draper City Corporation, and that's who I pay my bills to. It's right on the bill. Um, uh, they place, if you protest this fee, you don't want to pay it, it is then placed as a levy onto your property tax in the first lien position above all mortgages. And finally, if you do not pay your property tax, the county treasurer issues a ruling to take your home as payment for what seemed like an innocent police protection fee. This is similar to the structure of the Internal Revenue Service. The uh, IRS, who has uh, also has its own police force, the government, I should say, the federal government, who has its own police force, uh, they'll come and steal your property if you do not pay your federal income tax. These board members, uh, which are, in fact, the mayors of each city who are participating in the UPD uh, and the, the, the Salt Lake Valley Law Enforcement Service area, um, the mayors of each city and the county mayor are the government, while the sheriff and his United Unified Police Department are the collecting agents, similar to IRS agents, who see a similar pattern. In simple terms, these districts have been set up to bypass the law, 
which states that property taxes, sales taxes, and other taxing mechanisms cannot be raised without your approval. You are the voting public, you are the governed, therefore your approval is necessary to raise taxes. Um, by stating these districts with fee charging authority given to them by the government and this council, not by you, the voting public, this fee is in reality an unlawful mandatory tax. Again, it starts as a fee, morphs into a tax as in the form of a property tax if you don't pay the fee. Uh, even though these guys will tell you this is all legal, they're the ones passing the legal codes which makes their own actions, districts, and fees legal in the first place. So when government is passing its own laws, it becomes problematic. These men and women of the council, the mayors, and the county sheriff who was appointed CEO or chief executive officer of this incorporated district, the UPD, are making these decisions for you. And don't forget, you are still paying the same amount of taxes for the original sheriff's office, of which he is still the elected sheriff. Uh, but you are now required to pay this unlawful fee as well, or risk losing your home to the county. Perhaps you should be asking yourself why all sheriff's powers were transferred over to the corporate district, as well as all county property that was in the sheriff's department is now within the district, and of which the, the sheriff is CEO. Um, instead of all these powers instead being assigned to the already lawful elected sheriff's office and department, instead it all went to a separate entity. Instead, this third layer of government was created to police you, and the sheriff's departments were stripped of their sheriff's badges and became corporate district and municipal police officers. When we talked to these deputies who dreamed about being in the sheriff's department, they were very, very upset because they're no longer in the sheriff's department. They are now police officers. A police officer is a police man who puts on a uniform, a veil of the corporation, and goes out and makes sure that you are basically complying with all of their codes, all of the little things that they set up. That's what a sheriff's, uh, excuse me, a police officer does. Now, a sheriff is there to protect you from the federal government, to protect you from police officers. You don't really have that anymore because the sheriff is the CEO of that police force. <laughs> and the sheriff said, just give him a call. Oh, yeah, take just, care. just give him a call. <laughs> He'll take care of it. Yeah. Uh, the sheriff's department was dissolved. Okay, as the, as the Unified Police Department was formed, and this was uh, January 1st, 2010, leaving only the elected sheriff to protect your rights and a few of his prison guards to guard over you if you don't obey your district police. Basically what the, the sheriff said is that we still have sheriff's department people, but they are in the jails. Courthouse and the... Courthouse and the jails. They're, they're not doing you any good. When asked about this, the sheriff stated to KCPW on, in August of 2009, Quote, it's important that people recognize the agency, meaning UPD, and they will no longer say sheriff's office. It's anticipated they will say unified police department. What's worse, if we the people did not vote these men in their districts in, instead the county did, we the people cannot vote them out. This is the definition of the police state, if you think about it. Um, the following is from the Salt Lake Valley Law Enforcement Service Agency website. Now, the, well, it says it, it says, I don't even have to talk about it. It says it right on the website. The mission, the sole purpose of the Salt Lake Valley Law Enforcement Service area, which is all unincorporated areas and all the, 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 the cities, basically, the municipal cities that have signed on to it, and you've got the sheriff going to each city constantly pipping out his services as, as CEO, um, is to provide funding for police services in the unincorporated areas of Salt Lake County. Okay, That's its sole purpose, is to provide funding for the police services in the unincorporated areas of Salt Lake County. That means it's funding the Unified Police Department. The Salt Lake Valley Law Enforcement Service area does not provide police service, not in any way, shape, or form. You're paying a fee to a company to solely put that money into the UPD. Instead, it forwards revenues to the United, excuse me, the Unified Police Department, the UPD, which provides law enforcement services to the unincorporated county. The UPD is responsible for all police operations. And under the leadership section on their website, uh, this is S L V L E S A dot something. So oh. the UPD can say they never collected any money. Because of that. Right, and I'm going to get to that real quick. Uh, the Salt Lake Valley Law Enforcement Service area was created, this is very important, was created by unanimous vote of the Salt Lake County Council, not the voting public. 
You had nothing to do with this. <laughs> the council appointed Jim Bradley, uh, Michael Jensen, and Mayor Peter Corrin to serve as the service area trustees. Councilman Bradley serves as the chair. These are all corporate terms, folks. You cannot be the CEO of an entity without it being incorporated. And I want you to understand that these are corporate structures. Uh, because these districts are separate from each other, the sheriff and county mayor can say that the Unified Police District Department, excuse me, did not raise taxes, okay? Having total deniability since the Salt Lake Valley Law Enforcement Service Area, a completely separate district, is a separate entity, despite the fact that its sole purpose is to fund the UPD. So I can get up there as sheriff, and I guarantee you he's already doing it. I have never, I can, I can promise you that 100 years from now, I'm never going to raise your property taxes. I'm never going to increase your sales taxes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I've got this entity over here that's going to do it. You're watching my right hand, my left hand is, is you know. <laughs> so, so these guys are going to be campaigning on the fact that they're never going to raise taxes. Because so it, took the, it took the legislature to put a stop to the application of a special fee. Otherwise, they'd still be doing it. Well, yeah, but, but you got to understand, there are hundreds of districts within the state here, many, many of those, like, you know, the, the, the South Valley uh, Sewer District uh, charges $20 simply because there's sewers and your water is flowing into those sewers. Those sewers were built with taxpayer money. And to understand what a district is, I mean, let's, let's use the example of, I'm, I'm, a, I'm the county council and I say, well, what can we do now, you know? Hmm. How about a refrigerator tax? So I'm going to create the uh, Clint Richardson Refrigerator uh, Special District. And I'm going to say to you, you have a refrigerator, and you are using it. And therefore, you owe me $20 a month. That's what a district is. It's, it's taking already built infrastructure and creating a spider web over it of, of corporatism and charging you a fee that you have to pay or they take your property tax. They take your refrigerator. So, <laughs> I can also then turn it into a private, what's called a public-private partnership, which is what this government, non-governmental corporation in California is. It's a private corporation doing all the billing, all the collections, and everything for these three council members who call themselves the Salt Lake Valley Law Enforcement Service Area. And I can say to you, well, if you replace your refrigerator, and I'm getting kickbacks from Whirlpool here, remember that, I have... I have entered into a public-private partnership with Whirlpool, if you buy the energy-saving, sustainable, green, whatever word you use, Whirlpool refrigerator, well, I'm going to give you a 30% discount, or you don't have to pay me the fee. Meanwhile, I'm getting massive amounts of money from this private, non-governmental corporation. Well, they're already doing that with cap and trade tax. They're making you put certain kind of law, oh, wall sockets into the new homes. And yes. they're made by a particular company. Absolutely. And it's contracted. You have to buy those if you're mm -hmm. buying right. That is a public-private partnership. You'll notice that it's certain brands. This is, this is the future of government. You're going to see advertising on the moon before your lifetime ends. And I'm not kidding you when I say that. All right. Just, I'm sorry if I'm, if this is, I hope I'm not boring people. Uh, and to make matters worse, the whole effort and the reasons behind it were all based on a big government lie. What you don't know is that your county government has more money than it knows what to do with. You see, each city, state, and county government is required by law, by federal law in fact, to publish what is called the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. That is something you should write down, and if you look at these papers here, and those CDs actually have the county council, uh, the county uh, CAFR on it as well. You can look it up for any city, any what government. What year? Uh, any year, actually. No, I mean, what well, that one is that one is December 30, as of December 31st, 2009, the day before the UPD was created. Okay. Is that the latest edition? That's the latest one that I have, and it's more important to have that one because that is exactly the day before they created this district that they said they didn't have any money to fund police. And that's why I put that one on there. There is a new one out, I believe, and it just came out. So they're usually six months behind the fiscal year, and the fiscal year for that county is December 31st, 2009. Well, whatever year. So these financial statements show that Salt Lake County has billions of dollars in reserve funds and investment, as well as over $650 million, uh, 
which these funds are unapportioned, undesignated, and can in fact be used at the county's discretion. Okay? Um, every government system across the nation, all the corporations, even my Draper City Corporation, our small little government, is set up on a fund system. So if I have a water, uh, what they call an enterprise operation, something that the government is making money off of because I have to pay for the water, I have a fund that I put all my taxpayer money into, and then that fund is where I get the money to run or improve or do anything to that sewer district, and I say that all that money must be used for the, for the sewer. It's a great way to keep all that money in the fund, but there is no law, no anything that says that that is the case. They, they say that to keep the money hidden from the public. And this is not something, by the way, that is put on your budget report. When you get the budget report, it's always going to say that we're in the red because that way they can raise taxes. What they're not showing you is the comprehensive annual financial report, and you can find these online by simply typing in that phrase, typing in your city or county or state or school district. You want to know how much money is in your school district? You'll be shocked. Uh, and then put the year, and you'll find that. Um, so $650 million, and this was just a casual look that I did at the fund, at the CAFR, uh, are unapportioned, undesignated, can be used at the county's discretion for anything it sees fit. Your county government is hoarding this rightfully taxpayer money and claiming on its budget report that it cannot afford to pay for police services, including the sheriff's department, without raising your taxes or creating these districts. And this is what's so important, is that they are creating these districts under a lie that they cannot fund or raise taxes. Um, and it's true, they can't raise taxes because you people are smart enough to say no. Okay, um, sir, when I talked to Peter Caroon, he said this is not going on the ballot. What is not? This, the increase in our taxes. It's because there's no taxes. That's because it's a district. You see, it's a district, a special district, like I said, is a third layer of government. It's something that I just found out about not too long ago, honestly. And since I've been studying it, and we're going to be, if you want to listen about this, I've got a woman from Idaho who, who used to work uh, for as a systems analyst. And we're going to be, me and Dale here, this is Dale Williams from, uh, formerly from KTalk, now we, we sort of substitute host every once in a while. So if you tune in to KTalk on Friday morning at set from 7 to 9, we're going to be talking about this for two hours at 6.30. Uh, we, on this disc right here, uh, the top disc, the bottom one is a documentary that I made, and the top disc uh, in each of those packets has the CAFR for the county, and it also has uh, uh, the interviews that we did with the mayor, Mr. Caroon, who admitted to all of this information I'm telling you, and with the sheriff, who was the most belligerent. Oh. I, I, he scared me. He scared me, to be he honest. He got mad at me yeah, when I asked him a question, too. Yeah, he's very yeah, nice, are they? So <laughs> Everything I'm reading uh, from the CAFR, they don't like being he, confronted he confirmed uh, big time. Do you have a blog or a web address that you yes. get all of um, this information? Well, I'll tell you what, the, the best way to find it is if you type in this, this guy, I I, I, this guy was handing this out tonight, I don't even know him, but if you type in the sheriff who sold his county, that is the article that I wrote about it, and it's gone, it'll come right up because it's gone all over the country. Sheriff that sold his county? Uh, yeah, and my blog is Reality Blogger with one G. Uh, Did you know that West Jordan is going to have a public comment period for changing over to the UPD? Well, public comment? That's right. Really? Because, yeah, I was, I mean, like I said, I was pretty shocked that this one didn't have one. I couldn't believe what, it. Actually. What's the date and time of that? Yeah, I'd like to know. I'm sorry, realityblogger1g1g.wordpress.com. Uh, you know what impressed me about the. Blogger uh, what? Reality blogger what? <laughs> excuse me, dot wordpress. Wordpress.com. Is it the bottom of that page? Oh, is it? Thanks. There you go. <laughs> and then my other my other website is is uh, thecorporationnation.com, and that is the website where that movie is actually housed. Well, what impressed me the most about the comprehensive annual financial report for the county is that there are three there was one fund alone that had three hundred three million. Do I have that figure right? Absolutely. And so that could and that was entirely the disposition of those funds was entirely at the discretion of the county government. Absolutely. It says right in the cap. I'll, I'll read it. it. I'll read it. It's on those pages. They here. could have taken that down to two hundred and ninety million dollars. It had only two hundred ninety million dollars in it, and got completely erased the whole pretext they had for laying the household 
police fee, the hundred and sixty. Well, see, what's important here is not the, the, the fee. What's important is to transfer all of that power yes, away from a lawful entity, which is the sheriff, and into something completely different, which is this district. And that is exactly what they did. And they used the fact that they, they say they needed a fee. They say they didn't have the money as the excuse. And I'm here to tell you they're lying because what he's talking about. That's the most important part. Yes. But it, it's also, it also does help you understand how bold they are if they're going to tell it. Tell a lie, you know, they had no shame about it. Right, so they wouldn't even felt $13 million. Absolutely. The person that you need to tell about this, I don't know if you know, is that Daniel Thatcher represents this, this area. He says that there's been an audit okay of the UPD fee. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'll talk to him shortly. Okay, and he says that audit isn't done yet, but if there is money there that you, you wanna, know about... You want to know how ridiculous it is. He doesn't know what the CAFR is. Okay, when you're elected as a, an office holder, it is, it is not your... This is something that only the higher level people know. This is the, the biggest secret of government. When we approached Ron Paul to expose this, Ron Paul, who I think is such a good guy, he said he could not talk about this. When I had a state senator from, from, uh, from uh, New Jersey on the radio uh, named Dick LaRosa, he specifically told his people, that he was a former senator, and they said, I can't believe you're going to talk about that. You can't talk about that. You, nobody talks about this. And that's why you don't know about this. And that's why I'm making every effort, and I'm fortunate enough to have a public forum every, every one or two weeks where I can actually stream this from the mountaintop. And that's why I'm doing I mean, who is crazy enough to do what I'm doing right now? <laughs> to rent a room and say, these guys are, you know, crooks, right? I'm sure that someone listening right here is probably working for them. So, um, what he was talking about is just one, one fund in government. On page 52 of this comprehensive annual financial report for the county, uh, it has 303.8 million dollars as of December 31st, 2009. Again, the day before the UPD. This fund in the CAFR is described exactly like I'm going to read it. It's, quote, a voluntary external local government investment pool managed by the Utah State Treasurer to improve investment efficiency and yield. These monies are invested in securities permitted by the Utah Money, Man Money Management Act and contain no withdrawal restrictions other than timely notice of intent to withdraw an amount greater than $2 million. Okay, investment activity of the state treasurer and the management of the PTIF is reviewed monthly by the council, so the council's fully aware of it, and is audited by the Utah State Auditor. Monies invested in this fund are not insured and are subject to the same market risks as any similar investment in money market funds. So they've taken your taxpayer dollars, and this is just one example of many, many different funds. The only difference between those funds, which are, again, designated for sewer or golf courses or uh, you know, all kinds of things, is that this fund is purely speculative. In other words, all this money could have been used for police. We could have a, a, an army in this, in this county if they wanted to, because they had $303 million they could have used. All right, again, no withdrawal restrictions, okay? I'm going to go to another fund. Um, approximately 57.3, this is a quote, 57.3% or $154.9 million of the aggregated fund balances, uh, and these are the individual funds that I'm discussing that are told to you, like your golf fund, your, your water fund, okay? Approximately 57.3%, $154.9 million of those fund balances are unrestricted and undesignated. And this represents 54 million of the general fund, which is where everything starts. Um, so 54 million dollars was right there they could have used. Uh, which is available for appropriation by the county council at its discretion. Are you understanding these terms? The county council, at its discretion, any time it wanted to, could have taken part of that money, that $154 million, and used it for our 
what we now need a district for. $54 million in the general fund, uh, $56.2 million in capital projects funds, and $44.7 million in special revenue funds assigned for fund purposes. Fund purposes again, golf course, you know, whatever. UPD is a fraud. It, yes, it is. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's worse than a fraud. And, and let me try to conduct it by talking to officials, which is a whole other level. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a lawful or a legal fraud, really. Speaking of the fraud part, even on our taxes, we get credit for our taxes for our houses. You can't claim this. No oh. way, no how. No, because it's. Uh, and that's it's not a thing. You know, why can't we claim if they're going to take it? Why can't we claim it? Because but, but well, if, uh, if, if the government's acting as a bank or hedge fund, I mean, do they get, uh, do the same laws apply to them as far as like uh, corporate welfare and bailouts? Who makes the laws? Uh, well, government. <laughs> so you just answered your own question, right? Well, so what happens if uh, if they speculate or they over lend or they're bad with their money and they lose all this taxpayer investment? I mean, what if they go bankrupt? Who prints the money? Uh, the well, <laughs> yeah. kind of federal See, now don't ever confuse the central bank, the, the, the Federal Reserve, as something that is act, acting outside of government. Okay, that is not true. They're, they're, again, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report is filed by every government agency. And what you have to understand, if you really want to get to the nuts and bolts of this, and this is going to sound crazy until you watch my documentary, and I'm releasing a second documentary. The government, with investment funds like this, okay, keep in mind that Salt Lake County has billions of dollars, but most of it is apportioned, most of it is designated for, for building. A great way to hide something is to say, well, we have a future obligation to build a road, an off-ramp, Right? So they put that in a fund, invest the money, and then eventually build the road, but they keep all the investment uh, capital gains uh, from the investment. So what you, all you really have to understand is that in the United States, there are over 230,000 governments in the United States. Okay? Your state, you know, it goes down the list. You have federal, which is all these different departments, the post office and all these. You got uh, 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 counties. You've got municipalities, which are called municipal corporations. You've got uh, local governments. You've got unincorporated governments. You've got school districts. You've got pension funds, a huge siphon of taxpayer money. Um, you've got government after government after government, enterprise operations, all these golf courses. Everything that you see, including this library, is a government-held corporation. Okay, so when I look, um, one of the things I'm uncovering in my next documentary is that government owns every single corporation you can think of. Okay, so let's take one for example. Let's take um, let's take a company like Monsanto. If anybody's not familiar with Monsanto, I can look at the pension fund totals, for instance, because they list their top ten holdings, and you can pull up these huge investment reports from government, and and it. They have every company you can imagine, every bank in China, every, every, everything, every bank in every country is owned by this U.S. government. And, and when I say owned, I mean that they're the, the main shareholder. So I see that the New York pension system has over $1.2 billion in just Citibank. Okay? That's right in their own investment reports. And I can also look in 2006, and I can see the same thing. I can see that government owned Bear Stearns and Morgan Stanley and all these banks and evil corporations like Monsanto that we put so much blame on and never realizing that the government is passing the laws to regulate its investment held corporation. And that's really what we're dealing with when we're talking about the CAFR. How much of Monsanto and government at various levels? It's probably if, if you have fit more than 50% of the stock in a corporation, you are the owner. And likely 70%, so, right? If you, cons yeah, if you consider, yeah, it's generally around 75. If you, if you just pull up a stock chart, like for, for Microsoft, you'll see that 90% of the stock is owned by what's called institutional funds. Institutional funds are government funds. Okay, that's, that's what an institutional fund is. Government is an institution. Uh, Bill Gates uh, owns a teeny bit, but uh, see, government, because it's the main shareholder, government actually is the, the prox they have proxy votes as the main shareholder. So they decide what's going to happen. And when Monsanto, when, the, when the, the head of Monsanto quits Monsanto, joins the FDA after writing a bill 
that he wants, you know, the government to pass, becomes the head of the FDA, passes his own bill, and then gets rehired by Monsanto. And then you realize, you put that on top of the fact that government is the main shareholder of Monsanto, you begin to understand we cannot blame these private corporations because government is the investment holder of these corporations. And this is what we're talking about when we talk about the CAFRs, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. That $303 million in that fund is being invested. I'm going to read the list here of what they invested. Um, uh, $303 million are invested in, quote, government and agency securities, including long-term loans issued by the Agency for International Development, which are registered and fully guaranteed by the federal government. Um, instead of using the money to benefit the people of Salt Lake County, or even the state of Utah, it is invested in federal certificates of deposit, U.S. Treasury obligations, U.S. agency issues, high-grade commercial paper, bankers' acceptances, repurchase agreements, corporate bonds, it's a whole other subject, money market mutual funds, and obligations of governmental entities within the state of Utah, meaning uh, cor private corporations, essentially. So you see where your money is going uh, in these investment funds. Here's another, uh, one of the charts, charts, just to give you an example of how this works. End of fiscal year 2000, fund balances totaled 100 million. End of fiscal year 2005, fund balances totaled 225 million. End of two, 2009, they totaled, uh, after the so-called collapse of the economy, they still totaled $270 million. So you can see, as they say, as, as your budget shows that you're, they, they don't have money, <laughs> that they've spent all the money and they need more taxes, you can see by looking at their fund balances in the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report that the balances are going up at a steady increase. Uh, the actual portions of these funds, as of fiscal year 2009, ending December 31st, uh, as listed as unreserved, not appropriated or apportioned for anything specific in the future, for all those funds was $190.7 million. Okay? I don't need to go on. I mean, I, 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 could, I could go through the CAFR, I can read you all kinds of things that would shock you. But you, you get the basic idea. These guys are a criminal cabal, and they've started these districts. If you want to know what the districts are, picture in your mind a pie chart, or a pie, okay? And, and each, each thousand slices or a hundred slices of the pie are individual government functions. So again, your water district, your sewer district, your lights, everything is now becoming a district, just like all of the the structure of the whole entire sheriff's office got transferred over into a district, including all the property that taxpayers originally funded and paid for. Everything's being put into uh, a district. And so take those hundred pieces of the pie and slowly lay a district on top of each one. And you have what you might call, like I said, a third layer of government that we really don't know how to handle because, as you say, you can't write it off. It's something other than government. And, and that's what we're talking about when we're talking about this district. So I've talked enough. You guys want to okay. sit up here on the soapbox? I've got, to, I've got to straighten something out here for you. The judges, the attorney, everybody in government has taken the Constitution and put it aside and put in its place the Uniform Commercial Code. Yes, you're right. And that is the law as far as they're concerned. And if you want to get rid of this fee, all you do is write a letter on the bill they send you and say, I do not consent to this. And that's very important. That's very, and you've got to use the word consent. Now, if you if, go to my If law, you're silent, you're saying it's okay, it's yes. So silence cannot be tolerated anymore. We've got to speak out and start saying no. Okay, I no called consent. and said I did not consent in to writing. This. And writing. I talked to them on the phone, and they said if you don't pay it, 
They're going to put it on your test. And that's exactly what I'm talking about, you see, because they've created something that is outside. It, it's the first time I think that we've actually had something that's above the law. Because it's, 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 it's a private structure. It's a, pri a public-private partnership that it, it's something else. And, and again, uh, we're going to talk about this on Friday and, and hopefully get a, a better idea of what these districts are. But you're absolutely right. What we've got is now, because you're, because you're saying I don't consent, right, which is the lawful thing to do, you can no longer, and here's the real problem, you can no longer go to your sheriff and say, listen, I, I don't consent to this. This is a crime happening right under our noses. An entity but of government that, is abusing me within your jurisdiction. Yes. You're the final word. Yes, you are the law of the land. Continue. But see, now we have a sheriff who is wearing two hats because he is, he is, amazingly, he is still elected sheriff, but the council appointed him as chief executive officer of the UPD. Again, a corporate term. He's the boss of the municipal police. In he the is in charge of a corporation that must make a profit to exist. Network. What's that? We're on AM 630. It's on the AM dial on your radio. 7 a.m. on Friday. So if you write the thing, we don't consent to it. And they come and take this, our house. How can how can we? That's the problem because you don't have a lawful agency anymore to protect your right to not consent. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you. Is he is absolutely correct? Okay. Uh, I wrote a big article. If you, if you look for my consent article, it sh it tells you exactly what consensual law is, prima facie law, what uh, what statutory law is. Um, most U.S. code, including Homeland Security, including the TSA at the airport, is consensual. You, you, they, you must ha they must have your consent to search you and to even force you to go uh, through the scanners. But we don't have a lawful structure anymore that checks federal <coughs> powers, right? We don't, have a, 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 we don't have a sheriff anymore because he's wearing a complete conflict of interest, mm -hmm. a, another hat, where he has to ensure that his corporation, his incorporated entity, and if you don't want to call it a corporation, fine, his district is making a profit to support himself. He cannot be in a position to regulate his own you, you get, you get what I'm saying? That gentleman had a question. Yeah. And it's nothing. Uh, we just don't have where they put all this money. I mean, in the funds. Banks, I mean, like, and, and that's the scary part is because these aren't. Secret bank? Well, that's what's going to happen is, is they're going to they're start creating these districts for pension funds. They're going to start creating these for financing districts. And that money is no longer going to be in the CAFR. So. Yeah, it's going to be hidden, and they have a thing uh, that we've been talking about too called protected records that they came out with, where everything yeah. now is protected information. We no longer have a representative government because records are public. We're, what I'm telling you is, yeah, HB 116, we're in some serious, serious trouble, and I have only just found this out and, and been able to comprehend it to the level I have in the last month or two. Uh, the CAFR thing I've been studying for about a year and a half now. And I made that documentary about it, and I suggest you guys you guys watch it to understand oh, I will be. what the heck's going on. And then part be. two will be coming out. But uh, when where can we get part two? Oh, uh, in about two weeks. So I, my website is thecorporationnation.com. Um, so how do we bring these fees, these this money that you're talking about? How do we bring it out so that it can become part of the audit? Well, <laughs> again, you know, what he was saying also, he was talking about the courts. If you go to a website like Manta or a website called Dun & Bradstreet, you will find that courts are listed as private corporations. We, we had a woman in uh, Los Angeles, the most brave woman I know, who did a Freedom of Information Act and found out that her court in L.A. was a private corporation that was owned by the judge who was renting out his court services to the city or the county, I can't remember, and they did a, uh, uh, they found some some checks that the court was writing uh, to a dummy account. They call the IRS and say, hey, this is, you know, what's going on here? And they just completely ignore her. So your court system has been completely compromised and taken over by private corporations. So what is the solution? i got to be honest with you. I don't know, except for us to mutually boycott this whole thing, you know, and say no, and, and 
Can they take all of our houses without us going, wait a minute? Of course they do. Yeah, because the know, government said they're, they're, they're planning on it. People saying, well, this is what you do, go in there, you know, sort of like show them in their face. Well, I just want my money back. Uh, from that from that feet. Feet. Oh, for me, it was somebody who knew what they were doing, so they could push you in the right direction. Yeah, no, this thing, is, this thing has been planned. Um, you know, I've got a quote also from Winder, and I don't have it in here, but he got together with the, your former sheriff, and I've only been here two years. I'm actually, I was a, a Hollywood guy for six years putting, doing movies, and I quit to do this. Um, but. <laughs> He actually was together 15 years ago. He, he spent a decade and a half with Sheriff Kennard? Kennard. 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 They've been planning this for 15 years. They've been planning to unify the police. Before they unified, they made the Unified Police, police District, they have already made what's called a um, multi-jurisdictional task force. So counties have jurisdiction in other counties. This is happening in L.A. as well, that I've just found out. Um, states uh, are starting to have jurisdiction in other states. California police can now travel into Arizona and have jurisdiction. Multi-jurisdiction followed by a unification. We're in trouble. Yeah, and, we are. That's and this kind of event, again, is purposefully designed to be completely ineffectual mm -hmm. and not get your opinion. Because your opinion is not on record. And they don't care. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. But I, I thank you guys for coming in. I I <laughs> thank you. I, I hope that, that you learned something. And please take the DVDs. Definitely learned a lot. Definitely learned a lot. The what? Thank you. 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 Uh, the okay. interview with the sheriff that will blow your mind because he's he's a really belligerent kind of evil man. Oh yeah, he is. He's in a mood. Oh, he's, he knows I'm here. I think. And, and I'm afraid. I'm afraid for my life. I told you, you need to be. You need to be. He's not anymore. They're, they're not. It's, you know, I, my one experience with them got me to where I missed all the things. Any kind of help. Everybody's saying the same thing. We feel like we need police protection from him. They attack me. Versions, but uh, that's what I'm going to be reading from. If you're interested, uh, this this has uh, about four pages of the Salt Lake County CAFR Comprehensive Financial Report. Are you familiar with that? So it shows. So I, when I'm online, I well, what I show in there is about six hundred fifty million dollars from each of the county. Could have been used. Right now, it's based on something like that. But instead, they said they they created this special district. Yeah, the privacy policies about this. And what they're doing. You have to understand about it. I don't even know if you've got a little bit of government. Okay, so you've got law, which is the sheriff. You've got legality, which is everything else. Or at least municipal police. Now you've got something that's been going on for about 15 or 20 years called district. So you've got school districts, trash districts, you know, all these districts. And what each district is doing is taking over individual functions of government. So my South Valley uh, sewer district, I, I actually just found out that I owed them a bunch of money. What did they do? They, they created this district on sewers that were built by taxpayer money. They created a district like a spider web that covers every homeowner in that district, right? Um, and then they charge a fee. Okay, now in this case it's a $20 a month fee for sewers that were already built. They had nothing to do. They're charging me for, for pretty much nothing, the sewer system that was already built. Okay, now if I don't pay that fee, just like in the unincorporated area here, if they don't pay that fee, that police protection fee from this special district, that fee, seemingly innocent fee, turns into a lien against property tax. Certainly, yes. Okay? Then that property tax, if you don't pay your property tax, guess what? Just like the Salt Valley, uh, South, Valley Law, uh, South Valley Sewer District did to me, they put a, a lien on your tax. If you don't pay that, they're going to take it all. Because everybody's home is registered in the county, the state. And so they, uh, if you read 
this, this stuff, and if you read the uh, this actual whole thing here is completely sourced. Uh, you just type that into the internet; it's gone out uh, virally all over the place. Okay. Um, <laughs> I am wanting to like today. Um, one of the things that apparently we want to get out of this is to say, well, what direction do we want? And I'm actually wondering is, is your suggestion that let's not let's not put the property tax in this, but let's give it this food and have you guys support it. I want to recall the sheriff. I want to recall the mayor. I want to recall each county mayor that is cooperating with this. I want to recall the sheriff because they created an unlawful district. Okay, what this district does, and pardon me if I get upset about this because I'm realizing this is happening all over the country and it's scaring the hell out of me. And I have no protection now because my sheriff gave every single piece of property that goes to the county held got turned over to this district. Okay, so the sheriff is still there. He's still an elected sheriff. But all his deputies turned into police officers. Municipal corporate police officers. They are no longer, according to them, them, when nobody asked them, they are no longer sheriff's deputies. They are no longer lawful entities. They are they are now part of this district. So what I'm saying is look, here is the county caffer. I see one fund and one fund alone that has $303 million. This is an investment fund. It, it invests, excuse me, it invests in the, uh, the state, uh, the state treasurer's investment fund. It has nothing to do with funding government. It's just an extra fund that every state, excuse me, every uh, county and every city actually invests in. Um, if you read, it, here's what it says. And, and you've got this uh, at your disposal right there in your hands. It says uh, Utah Pu Public Treasurer's Investment Fund has $303 million. Okay? And then it says this fund is a voluntary external local investment pool managed by the Utah State Treasurer to improve investment efficiency and yield. These monies are invested in securities permitted by the state and contain no withdrawal restrictions other than timely notice of intent or withdraw to uh, to withdraw to intent to withdraw an amount greater than two million. Okay? What this says Thank you. Okay, alrighty.